Hi, my name is Peter Horriman. Um, I've been in the saddle industry for over 25, 30 years now. And um, recently I've um, discovered that horses' range of movement is, is um, very important to horses, whether it's in, in the question industry or in the racing industry. And I've just recently designed a new exercise training saddle, which uh, I feel, and uh, with the results we've already had from different trainers and riders, it's uh, much more beneficial to the horse's movement. So here we've got your typical thoroughbred. And what I'd like to point out to you is, some of the important features about a horse's um, anatomy that's affected by a poorly fitting saddle or a saddle that's pinching around the shoulder area. Drawing the shoulder blade here, or the scapula, and then down to your elbow, and down to your, your front legs there. This area here is, is bone on the shoulder blade, but this part here is cartilage. And cartilage is a soft bone, just like you have in the cartilage of your ears and your nose. You might know some of those rugby players, they get them in the scrums and or boxes, they, their cartilage gets damaged and you can never, the cartilage never heals. Same thing with the horse. If a horse's shoulder is damaged by a, a tree that's too narrow or edging too far into the horse's shoulders as the horse strides, uh, it damages the cartilage just like I would be chipping away at a horse's cartilage like this. I've actually seen evidence by vets in Germany where they've taken a layer of skin off the horse's shoulder uh, down to the, to the cartilage and they've actually seen a horse's cartilage being damaged by poorly fitting saddles. Now, it's something that you don't notice uh, in a horse when they're, when they're walking and trotting and, and galloping because at the end of the day, there's no swelling there. In some extreme bad cases, it swells, but rarely do you see swelling or bleeding or anything. So no one really t notices what's, what's happening to the horse, but yet they're wondering why a horse is lame after a race sometimes and tight around the shoulder area and in the neck area, but I'll get to that shortly. So what I want to explain about the shoulder is that with the shoulder blade here, this is the end of the shoulder blade right here. Now, some people aren't aware as to how much the shoulder rotates back and forth. And when you actually lift the horse's leg up, you able to do that now? Yeah. Come on, lift him up here. Good boy. We've gone from here back to there. So this is where now your shoulder blade has come back to. That's just by lifting his leg up. He doesn't get stretched right out as a horse would in a, in a full gallop. So sometimes they move right back to here even. Thanks, you can put it down here. So when that happens, and if I take a, um, a saddle tree, like a typical half tree, like this, you can see how the angle of the points here, angle forward, and as the horse's shoulder moves back and forth, it pinches that shoulder blade there. And as I said earlier, in some cases, it actually chips away at the cartilage. Okay, you have often padding underneath the saddle, but at the end of the day, there's still pressure through that padding and tightness around the shoulder blade and your wither muscle, which we'll get to as well. The other thing I'm concerned about is in the typical half tree saddles is this point here. By the time this girth chap's pulled on here, the sur signal goes over the top. We pull it down like this, it pulling into the horse's back. You can see the pressure points there, the pressure into the shoulders. The rider hops on, there's weight on the saddle. And then this shoulder is trying to squeeze up into this tight area here. It really restricts the horse's shoulders. And in and around that area, if we're going to show you this one as well, there's a trapezius muscle. Now this trapezius muscle is here and here in the horse's neck. It's attached to the scapula, to the shoulder blade. It actually helps the horse's legs come up. It helps bring the horse's leg up and out and down again. So this um, trapezius muscle is very important as to how uh, free we keep it. In relation to, to people, it's the same muscle we have at the base of our neck here. You know when someone pinches you there, how numbing it can be. It's the same with the horse. When a stallion mounts a mare, the stallion mounts the mare, bites the, the mare in the neck here, the trapezius muscle, the mare stuns like this and the stallion does his job. But basically what I'm trying to explain to you is the trapezius muscle is very important to keep open and free of any, any um, uh, extreme pressure. So it's right through here, the trapezius muscle. Very important muscle. Now, I'm just going to put a range of other trees on the horse's back. You've got, first of all, a typical American half tree. You can see here, pinching right on the trapezius muscle again. Here you've got your typical English, French half tree. Again, tight in the shoulder area, pinching on the wither muscle and the spinal muscle here. The, the ligaments that run, around, run down each side of the horse's spine. And again, once the girth chuts are pulled down here, the surcingle goes over the top, 
you've got this narrowness here, like a fork, digging into the horse's spine area here and into their back. Another one, very common in Australian saddles. Here you can see the angle of the tree going forward into the horse's shoulder, again digging in the back here and pressing there like this. Another common half tree exercise saddle sold around the world. It's probably one of the worst ones because it's even shorter. It's, it angles forward, but this tree here is even shorter, so it's very, very tight there in the horse's back. By the time you're pulling the girth straps, digged in the horse's back like this. Then I've got a uh, what we call a full tree, which is in um, a lot of other saddles as well, sold around the world. They're a full tree like this. Some people prefer this, some people prefer the half tree. But basically, you've still got a sharp angle pointed here, which is also digging into the horse's shoulder blade and in its trapezius muscle. I don't like the full tree as much either because it's very rigid, doesn't have any flexibility. I like the flexibility in the horse's back, uh, in the saddle, to move with the horse's back. So let me just show you a few examples of what saddle trees can do to horses um, if they're not fitting correctly. In the first instance, we've got a horse striding off. Notice how the head comes up. This obviously leads to horses short, shortening their stride, uh, which is very important in, in, the, in the gallop and in the trot. But um, and in the second example, we're now showing how the horse strides off and it actually dips us back, uh, being the result from the, the, the two rear points of the tree uh, digging into the horse's back. And now from a different angle, we're looking at the same tree uh, under the same pressure points. As the horse moves off, so you can just really notice the horse's muscle spasming in around the trapezius muscle area, and this resulting in the horse's head coming up again once again. So what I'm going to do is slide my fingers down here inside the gullet, under the tree point here. Um, Dad, could you lift the leg up please? There we go, yeah. pull the leg up. Shoulder comes back, and boy, are my fingers getting tight behind that, underneath the tree point here. And of course, if we just drop that leg down again, I'll leave my fingers there. Let's just watch this here as well. Now lift the leg up again. I'll keep my fingers at the front. As the leg comes up, the shoulder comes back, push, whoa, 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 push his leg down, quick. Whoa. Yep, that's really digging into, his, the pressure of the shoulder pushing the saddle back into, digging into his back here, you saw the reaction. That was amazing, I wasn't, wasn't ready for that. No. But um, yeah, just again shows you how as the shoulder moves back, it pushes the tree up and out and digs the saddle tree into the horse's back here. So I'm not going to do it up too tight, I'm just going to go through like I normally would. And you can see here the pressure on the horse's back, on the trapezius muscle, side by side of this horse's spine, and on the shoulder here as well. Of course, remember the rider's weight is pulling down in here. Look at that. A little bit of weight from my hand to my arms, pushing down the horse's back. Head starting to come up and down. Again, we're getting reaction from the, from the trapezius muscle. Very important. And again, no matter how much packing is under there, the pressure will still go through into his trapezius muscle. Look again. You see? Just by me putting a little bit of pressure on there, maybe all of 10 kilos is against 50 or 60 kilos. So here we've got a, uh, what we call a full tree. Also used these days, probably not as much as the half tree, but um, it's a full tree. So here we've got a nice load bearing surface. However, with the shorter girth points here, uh, sorry, tree points, the shorter tree points, and a very sharp angle, it, it's, it digs into the horse's shoulders, particularly the top of the scapula. And your trapezius muscle again is right under this nerve ending here. Under, beneath, right beneath here, we've got what I call a cranial nerve. It's a nerve ending that comes out from the neck down through the shoulder and comes out here. Also a very important nerve as to how the horse's head and neck will react. So it's pushing right on that pressure point there. So now we'll have a demo of um, my new paint and design tree. We'll throw that on. And, well, look at that already. You know, it just, just fits more like a glove. There's no real pressure points anywhere on the horse. The load bearing surface is much broader. Here we've also got this section here is flexible. So when the trapezius muscle moves and pulses like that, as the horse is moving, it moves with the horse, doesn't restrict the horse, doesn't pinch the horse. And as I've explained before, these ones here flex with the horse's back as well. So let's girth this up. But gee, that looks nice already. In some cases, I've even had horses trial these exercise saddles. And a jockey, one particular jockey in Sydney, came back to me and said, not only is the horse more relaxed, 
going around the track, whereas before he was carrying his head high, it was a filly actually, three-year-old filly, and uh, she was carrying her head high, fighting the bit, her tail was swishing, and I, I gave him one of these helps a trial, and he, he, afterwards he pulled up and, and told me, I was actually back in Melbourne, he was in Sydney, and I called him, I said, how did you go? He said, he said mate, he said, I can't believe how, how much difference it made to this horse. She's not only better to ride, she doesn't swish her tail around anymore, but one thing she doesn't do anymore either, she doesn't speedy cut. Now, speedy cutting, for those of you who know, a horse comes through and hits itself on the inside of its leg, is often, there's always, the only way to fix it would be um, corrective shoeing uh, from farriers. And it really surprised me to hear this horse wasn't speedy cutting anymore. But it makes sense when a horse is more comfortable to gallop and move more freely, and more balanced, the horse is more balanced, so therefore we don't have to have horses knocking each other's legs through, through, the, back, through the back hocks. So they're, they're, they're not speedy cutting anymore. So um, it was really exciting to hear that. It did more than what I asked for. So I'll do the girth up to the top hole, use the same hole we have on every other tree, and we'll just walk him off Marley, see what happens. Already walking off there, his head doesn't come up, his back doesn't get pinched, and his head is also, I notice, just walk, flowing from side to side. He looks a lot more relaxed than what he did before. He was waiting for his head to come up and only go straight. He's looking around, he's happy. Now I'm going to take the, uh, undo the girth. The other thing I'd like to show is the, the dust imprint. You can see when I lift the tree off, I've got an outline here of the dust. You'll get that on the cleanest horse across here as well. It's got, got an even load bearing surface all the way around here. You haven't got uh, any points showing digging to the shoulders here. Uh, we've got a nice even contact and that's before you even build the saddle and uh, put your extra padding underneath and your saddle blanks underneath that as well. So that's another good indication of lo good load bearing surface. Okay so here again you can see with our shoulder blade like this where the tree points sit in comparison to my new design of tree. Here we've got your typical American tree, European. There we go. You can see how it points to point forward. The length is a lot shorter, way back here. Another tree used around the world, popular brand of saddle and half trees. Again, tree points pointing forward, even shorter in length. As you can see, it digs right in here where the girth straps and surface signals come over. And your typical English wooden spring steel tree used for many years and still today around Europe and America. Again, tree points digging to the horse's shoulders. The length of the tree is a lot shorter, but give me one of these trees any day. So much more comfortable for your horse. There we go.